Before modern warfare and the days following the fall of the Roman Empire, Europe was cast into darkness. It was a time when kingdom marched upon kingdom in hopes of ruling the continent. Now Hasbro brings you straight to the battlefield with the Risk Europe board game. Attack your enemies, expand your borders, and conquer your opponents before they conquer you. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to go medieval on those who oppose you, take their land, obliterate their armies, and smile while doing it. Sounds fun? It is. So, let's get started by checking out the game pieces. Inside the game box you'll find everything you need to play. There are four armies, and each of them has 25 footmen, 12 cavalry, 12 archers, and 4 siege weapons. Each player also receives 8 playing cards known as the King's Order cards. You will use these cards to issue orders that propel your army into action during each round of play. Then there's the board. The board is laid out to depict a series of cities and their surrounding territories. Each city grants you one crown toward victory. Notice that eight cities are marked with a gold crown. These are locations that give you additional power when you control them, so if you rule one, it is in your best interest to protect it at all costs. Only these gold crown cities each grant a bonus tile during play. That tile has special attributes. For example, if you own Stockholm's tile, it'll bring fortunes to your kingdom. Every time you are the attacker and win a battle, you collect four silver coins from the reserve. Whereas the occupier of Rome is granted two crowns toward victory instead of one, propelling them toward the forefront of the race to win the game. There are also seven cities marked with black crowns. These are additional cities that you can bring into your kingdom to expand your control over Europe. Notice that each city has a number next to it. That is the city's tax value, meaning the amount of coins that you collect when that city is claimed or taxed. For instance, Constantinople has a tax value of three coins, while Rome has four. Also notice the sea lines. These connect territories through water routes, enabling armies to move and launch attacks quickly across the water. Risk Europe is a four-player game for ages 14 and up, but it can also be played by two or three players with mercenary rules. Today we will go the traditional route and set up the board with four players. Here to help with this tutorial are Risk Warriors Blue, Purple, Green and Orange to illustrate maneuvers and strategies that will help you to understand the rules of the game. The object of Risk Europe is to dominate your opponents by collecting seven crowns first. And if that doesn't work, you can always just wipe them from the map. William the Conqueror did not expand his kingdom by sitting on his throne. He did it by dominating the continent. There are three ways to obtain crowns for victory. One, claiming cities. Two, taking over opponent cities. Three, by using cold hard cash to buy crown cards. So remember, the first player with seven or more crowns at the end of a round wins the game. Each player begins by selecting an army. Each army comes with its very own war banner, a reminder card which lets you know what you can purchase and how much it will cost, and most important, those King's Orders cards. Then each player receives five silver coins. Money is used throughout the game to recruit army units, build castles, and purchase crown cards. Your reserve of coins grows throughout the game by expanding the size of your kingdom and collecting taxes. You will also receive one crown and one castle to place on your kingdom's inaugural city. Players will bid to see who places first and starts the first round. Each person secretly chooses a number of coins from their starting amount and holds them out in a closed fist. All players will then reveal their coins simultaneously, and the person with the most coins begins. Only that player's coins go back into the reserve, and that person will receive the first player marker. Because Blue won the first player marker, she gets to choose a gold crown city first. In this instance, she chooses Berlin, and begins by placing her castle and crown. She also collects four coins from the reserve as a bonus for claiming the city, matching the tax number indicated next to the crown. 
Then she places her war banner on the first space of the crown tracker located along the side of the game board. Now the blue player places her starting army consisting of 10 footmen. She must divide them between the starting territory and one adjacent non-city territory. In this case, she chooses to place six men in Saxony and four men in adjacent Bohemia. Blue also receives Berlin's bonus tile, and this ends her turn. Now the player moves clockwise to the left to player two, green. Okay, well, I wanted Berlin, but I guess I'll take London instead. I put my crown and my castle in London, then I have to split up my ten footmen. I'm going to put five in London, and you know what? I think that you've been behaving like a bad neighbor, so I'm gonna come after you. I cross into the mainland, put the remainder of my troops in Lorraine, watch out Berlin. I take my three coins for taking control of London and London's bonus tile, and that ends my turn. Now again, passing to the left, the orange player moves in. Don't worry, Blue, I got your back. I'll take Paris. Putting six in Paris and four in Burgundy. I'm placing my coins. Thanks. And that ends my turn. That's getting a little uncomfortable, so I'm just going to skedaddle to Constantinople. I hear they have perfect weather this time of year. And as the purple player skulks away with his tail between his legs, the board now shows alliances being forged and the first signs of battles being waged. And now we are ready to unleash the dogs of war. Risk Europe is played over a series of rounds. In each round, the king can only issue two orders to his kingdom. These orders come from that player's hand of King's Orders cards. These allow you to carry out all actions in the game. Let's take a quick look at what those orders are and how they work. The expand card allows you to move any number of your army units from one territory you control into one adjacent territory that is either unclaimed or occupied by an opponent's army. But take note, you must leave at least one army unit behind to keep your kingdom connected. Split Expand allows you to move any number of your army units from a territory you control to up to two adjacent territories that are either unclaimed or occupied by an opponent's army. Both territories must be adjacent to the original territory, and again, you must leave at least one army unit behind in that territory. The Maneuver Order allows you to relocate any number of your army units from one territory you control to one other territory, up to two territories away, already under your control or in dispute. And finally, we have Tax and Spend. Taxing your territories is the main way to make money. The more you make, the more you can spend. Choosing the Spend option allows you to make purchases that strengthen your kingdom. Clearly, the way you choose to play each card is part of your strategy to dominate the board. Knowing when to play a card or hold back on playing a card is critical for the survival of your kingdom. Now back to the game. There are two steps to every round. The first step begins when each player chooses two of their king's order's cards. The top card is played first, the bottom second, so choose the order carefully. Once everyone has placed their two cards face down on the table, the round begins. Let's watch as the players take us through a round. Is everyone ready? My first order is to expand. I am going to move footmen from Bohemia into Poland and take over Warsaw. And Blue has chosen to let history repeat itself by marching from Bohemia into Poland and claiming that kingdom as her own. She does this by playing an expand card, which also has a fortify bonus action. Because of the bonus on my card, I can fortify before or after I expand. Because I own Berlin, I get to maneuver for free after I expand. So I'm going to move additional men from Berlin to help Poland. And that's my turn. You might think Blue is crazy for leaving one man behind with green at her doorstep, but at the moment, she doesn't see Green's army as a threat because Berlin is protected with a castle. A castle prevents an opponent from expanding into that territory unless they attack with a siege weapon. At this time, Green does not have one, so Blue is not worried. The play passes to the left, and the next player's card is revealed. And Green has chosen the Tax and Spend card. I'm going to collect taxes from London. I collect coins for London and any connected territories. 
I own Lorraine, but because it doesn't have a city, it's only worth one additional coin. So, that's four coins total. Because I collected taxes from London, I get to place two archers in London for free. And that ends my turn. Yeah, that's a nice story, but I don't like being bullied, so I'm gonna attack you. I fortify my castle territory with four footmen. Orange has played his King's Order that also comes with the Fortify bonus action. Orange has chosen to use the bonus action before playing the card that he has selected. And now, I'm coming after you. And he has chosen the Expand Order to attack Lorraine, but he must hold his troops for the fight. Battles are fought only after all cards have been played, giving all players a chance to respond accordingly. And so, we move on to purple. I'm going to split expand my troops from Bulgaria, put four guys in Hungary, and two in Greece, and claim that too. By playing the card with the split expand option, Purple has claimed two cities at once, and now he collects three coins from Buda and two from Athens for claiming those cities. And finally, his war banner moves two spaces, putting him in the lead at three crowns. Who's the coward now? All players have played their first card, and now we move to the second card, which starts the second half of the round. I am going to fortify and expand. I will add three men into Poland and use my expand order to attack the purple player's territory. And that will end my turn. I am going to fortify and maneuver. Green places four footmen into England to fortify a castle territory, and then moves eight footmen and two archers into Lorraine to help support the fight. And that is the end of my turn. I look forward to taking you down. I'm gonna fortify and expand as well. I'm gonna place two troops in Swabia. And I'm going to claim Zurich. Orange places the crown and collects his tax monies. I'm going to play the tax and spend card, which also comes with the King Me bonus action. King Me. When this card is revealed, Purple takes the first player medallion from the blue player. Now he has to make a decision. If he chooses to tax, he can only collect six coins because Buddha is in dispute, and you cannot collect coins from a territory when an opponent has troops threatening your ownership. However, if he chooses to spend, he can buy a siege weapon. And because Constantinople's bonus is four free footmen with his siege weapon, he can place them in any city territory he controls, again, except for Buddha at this time due to the dispute. Purple decides that Buddha is a lost cause, so he plays more defensively and purchases more units. With 10 of my coins, I'm going to buy a catapult, and with my remaining three, I'm going to buy a cavalry. All right, um, I am placing my catapult in Athens, and my cavalry in Turkey. And with Purple ending his bold move, we conclude all of the card play in the first round. Exciting news though, before we move into round two, all disputed territories must be resolved. So it is clear that before the round is finished, blood will be shed. Once you're engaged in battle, your units must attack in the following ranked order. One, siege weapons. Two, archers. Three, cavalry. Four, all units. To roll for the attacks in rank 1, 2, and 3, both players count up the total number of army units they have, but only in the territory that is under siege. Then they roll the number of dice that is specified on your ranked attack order card per unit. You must roll a value equal to or greater than the number shown in order to score a hit with that unit. Before we move on to the battles, it's important to know these rules. If two or more players are tied with seven or more crowns at the end of a round, the player with the most territories is declared the winner. If a tie somehow still remains, then the player with the most cash gets the spoils. Plus, if you are the one holding the first player marker, you will trade it in for an additional 10 coins. Now that unlucky player who controls no cities at the end of a round will be eliminated and sadly must remove all of their units from the game board and return their city bonus tiles and coins back into the reserve. A player who does not control any territories but does hold one crown card may still play another round so they can try to claim a territory to keep themselves alive and well in the game. If the player fails to gain ground, they are eliminated and their crown cards are removed from the game completely. Now let's get back to the game in real time. When last we looked, Orange and Green were about to duke it out over Lorraine. Now, 
It's time to battle. Although you're an attacker, I get to go first because of my archers. Ooh, because I rolled a five or higher, you lose one. That's one down. Okay, general roll. Both lose one. My archers get to go again. Ooh, two down. Here we go. Oh, two down. It's only two. Yeah, we only got two left. And my archers. <sighs> Looks like your attack failed. Game's not over yet. As our battle rages, remember that your game will vary from what we've shown here. I bid you farewell, and thank you for joining us for Risk Europe from Hasbro Gaming.